Hi, my name's Mark Gillen, and this is a video tutorial for pie charts and angles. Uh, measuring angles, looking at angles, calculating them out, reading them, and then applying them. So we'll look at both of them. So if we look at angles, we think about angles. So just a wee recap, if we had a, a, a pie, if you like, then you get a, a full circle, which is 360 degrees. Uh, it's written with 360, but your, your wee degree symbol at the end there. So if we half that pie right down the middle, then it'd be half of 360 degrees, 180 degrees. So half a pie, half of 360. So this is just us working with fractions and angles. So a quarter is half of a half, isn't it? So it's half of 180, which would be 90. So a quarter of 360 is 90 degrees. 90 degrees, like so. Boop, there we go. Right, and half of that, yep, about that, 45 degrees. So half of 90, 45 degrees. So we talk about 45 degree angles. There we go, it's about that. Protractor. Now, a protractor helps us to be more precise. So it is. And you'll see that we've got the protractor is 0 and 180 at one end. And then if you look right along that line there, you get a 0, 180 to the other side there. So it works in both directions. So you've got uh, certain degrees going in from, from that direction. And that, OK, I think I've covered that. Let's move on. Right, so the protractor and how that works with pie charts. So protractor, and this one indicates here an angle of 120. Whoop. There we go, 120 um, degrees. And it can be quite accurate if we're looking at So if we have a pie chart that's been provided to us, um, and we've got the de and we work out the degrees. Now this wasn't get the degrees written on it, but if it didn't, then we could still work out from that pie chart if we've got a ninety degrees, which we've got a ninety degrees. It's lying slightly funny there, but we've got ninety degrees. Then that's quarter of the pie. So therefore, if somebody was looking out their budget or looking at a budget, then we would know that school fees there occupies about quarter. It's well, it is. Precisely quarter is 90 degrees, so it's precisely uh, a quarter of the overall amount. Right, what I want to do is to just show you how we can actually measure and looking at a protractor and the use of protractor. So, as I said, we've got 0, 180 at one end, 0, 180 at the other, and here we have a pie chart, and we're going to have a look at some of the angles. Now, what I've done is I've marked some of the segments out, and I've drawn lines there for the segments, just to highlight it to you. Now, you'll notice you get a wee sort of bubble-type thing in the protractor that allows you to get quite accurately to the middle of where you want to measure. So that's the middle of the middle of the segments, the middle of your pie pie chart. And what you're going to do is you get the line on the zero. Now you do it from either direction. I'm doing it from this direction, moving up to the and here we have the 90. Now there's a wee segment that's just in between there that's 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 just past the 90, but there is a line there that goes up to the E there, as you can see there. There's a wee line there giving you the 90, so we know that that angle there is 90 degrees. It's a quarter of the pi, so prawn accounts for a quarter. Now, we do the same for the other side. Now, remember, the other side of the protractor, you've got the 0 and the 180 there for the protractor. Get it right in the middle, and we can see now, it looked as if that was going to be about 10 degrees. It's actually not quite. So if we're measured in the orange segment there from the 0 up to the 70, and we get 71 to, um, and I think we'll I'll zoom in a minute. I'll show you a bit more. So we're going from the zero at that end and working our way up to 70, 71, 72.5 degrees to be really precise here. Okay, so I think it's about 72 degrees. And if we then look at a pie chart, so we've got a pie chart actually given us this. So if we can read this pie chart, then we can identify out from here. So if we were to know the total amount of packets of crisps, for example, so we know, being told that it's 500. 
So now we can work from this. So the prawn, which we actually just measured there using a the protractor, and we can see it as well. It's at a right angle there. Mm -mm -mm. Depends how I'm there. So prawn accounts for 90 degrees. So if we get a 90 degrees, then we know that's a quarter of the pie. And the pie accounts for 500 total amount of crisps, packets of crisps. So a quarter of 500 is 125. That's your quarter. So we measure the angles. We can be quite precise and we can find out from a pie chart that's been made up to illustrate the sizes and the quantities. Once we know the overall amount, then we can work that out from there. Now, what we can do as well, we know that beef accounts for 180 degrees, so there's 180 degrees. So we write that as a fraction, 180 over the total 360 degrees. So we could we know that it's going to be a half, but to, to, to take it from a simplified to to know that we can do it more difficult. So if we can then measure any amount and put it over 360, now when you put it as a fraction, it's obviously that amount at the top divided by the amount at the bottom, multiplied by the total amount of packets of crisps in this case. So it's the total quantity. And this is how we can find out from the angles how much these segments are actually worth in terms of a value. So we take 180 over 360, it's small as, small as form is, is, is a half. So it works out the same, obviously. So what we have learnt from this here is that you can take an amount of 360. So we had a, a 90th of 360. So what we can do is we can write 90 over 360, and it's always forms a quarter, but it's still a fraction. So we can still work from fractions here of, that's the multiplication there, of the total value that we want to find out. Um, so we've got the total value, and that would then work that. So, so working on that basis, what we can see is the angle of the segment divided by 360, which is the total pi. So what we're getting is a fraction measurement. So whether it's a quarter, whether it's an eighth or, or whatever. So you take the angle. So the angle divided by 360 gives us that fraction. It's the amount of the overall total angles multiplied by the number value, the total number value. So in that case, it was 500. It could be anything. So as long as we know the total there, then we can use this to read from a 360-degree total, and we can then work out a segment and how much a segment is worth. So that way, we can, we can use the angles to divide the total angle of the 360 multiplied by the total number value. So the second part there, with that equation there, we can calculate from a pie chart as to work out any amount at all. So if we look at calculating some angles, back the way. So when you think we had a pie chart there, how do we get to the pie chart in the first place? This is what I'm going to explain now. So you might have some figures, like I've got some figures here. I've got the grades of students and the number of students that got those grades. Now, of course, it's it's fictional because my students would always do much better than that. Um, the, every single one of them would get a straight A. Of course they would. Right, so if we have a look at this, we've got grades A, B, C and D, and we know the, the number of students. So eight students got a grade A. Nine students got a grade B. Seven students got a grade C. If we add all them up, then we've got a 30 as a total. Now, here we go, working with fractions again. Because when we're working with a pie, working with parts of things, it's a fraction. So, working with fractions. So, we're working this out to find out what degrees will actually be occupied within the 360 pie chart. So, we're doing the opposite of what we did earlier. So, what we did earlier was we looked at a pie chart and we worked out how much it was of the 360 degrees to get the value. Now we're going back the way. 
we've got the value for each of the segments. And what we're doing is we're working on the basis to find out how much the 360 is to be occupied by each of these, which is a fraction of the total. So the total is 300, uh, sorry, 30. It's 30 is the total. Oh my goodness, it's getting late. Right, so now we need to work out the fraction of the 360 degrees for each of these so that we can see the grade B. Grade B, the total amount of students that got grade B was 9, 9 out of 30. So that's going to be the largest. And we want to illustrate that as being the largest segment. So it's going to have the, the greatest degree. The greatest segment of 360 degrees. So, here we go. So, the first one is grade A. Sorry, I pressed the back button there. Shouldn't have. Right, so here we go. I always like to throw in me mistakes to show that I'm human. So, the first one is grade A. So, we take 8 as being a fraction of 30. So, it's 8 over 30. Multiplied by 360. What we did the last time was divide by 360 because we did it the, the reverse. We had the pie chart. Now we're trying to make the pie chart from the figures, not work them out. So that would make us 96 degrees. The second one is grade B. That's 9. 9 out of 30 multiplied by 360 gives us 108 degrees. The third one is C, which is 7 out of 30 multiplied by 360, gives us 84 degrees, and so on. So if you make a wee note of them just now, so grade A was 8 out of 30 multiplied by 360 makes 96 degrees. So if we were to do that for the whole of our chart, so we get grade A, we've got 96 degrees, B, 108 degrees, C, 84 degrees. So I've done it for them all. Then I've plotted them onto a chart and I've made sure I've got the angles correct. So obviously B has got the greater angle, it's 108 degrees. The smallest is grade E, there's only one student that got that out of 30, so that was 1 30th. That worked out of 360 degrees, 1 30th of a 360 degrees is 12 degrees. So the E which is the yellow one in the middle of the top one there, which is 12 degrees. So no matter which way you do it, we can work it back the way, forwards, doesn't matter what you regard it to be, but you can go from figures to a pie chart and from a pie chart to figures. You now know how to do it, I hope. If not, watch the video again. Just a, a wee summary for you as well. And what I would ask you to do as well, Make some charts yourself and try them out. Use a protractor. Have fun. Use Make up your own figures and then draw onto a chart. Ask a friend to join in and your friend can draw some themselves and you can swap them and you can calculate them out and then you can work it back the way so, you can, so you're getting used to that. So the use of a protractor, the total of 360 degrees, we have calculated it from a chart and we've calculated it from some figures to put into a chart. Thanks for watching. And as I said, if you want to rewind, you can rewind me quite easily with video. And you can also fast forward me as well if you want to. And press pause. So have fun with the video. That's something you can't do with me in a classroom. Well, you can, I suppose, but a little bit more difficult, isn't it? Right. Thanks again for watching. And uh, bye just now. Bye-bye.